Hello everyone and a very warm welcome indeed to your last vlog. The last vlog that Lindsay B is going to be in the shed. Now I've decided I've done all I can do in the shed. It's now time to bring her out and give her a little bit of sunlight and see what we've got left to do. Which is still a few jobs I can assure you that. Hi guys, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of One Man and His Boat and it's a very special one indeed. And lucky for you guys, I'm going to have cameras everywhere. Hello! And we've also got Jeff joining us on this epic vlog. Uh, he's going to be bringing his drone so hopefully we'll get a good few aerial shots of the boat actually coming out of the shed and let's hope there's not any major disasters. But before we get started and while it's still in my head, I want to give a wee shout out to Andy Gach who kindly donated some plywood for us to help us guide the boat out of the shed. And without his donation we would have been in a little bit of sticky wickets so actually getting the boat out of the shed safely. It still might not go according to plan but however we have to try. <laughs> right guys before we actually get on with these small jobs I have been thinking overnight while the boat is sitting where she is on the hard standing, uh, I basically would like to find out how many crews she ca can carry. Now, I've got a number in my head which is the magic number of 10 because I'll tell you why in a second. Right guys, so these, these are the crews that I'm going to be fishing. Now they're, they're 30 by 20 by 16 and they weigh about 25 kilograms. Now if I was to have 10 of these aboard, you're talking about a quarter of a ton of weight. Now obviously the more creels you have, the more weight above the waterline you're going to have and obviously the more weight above the waterline is a big no-no. So that's one of the reasons why I'd like to keep the fleet small. Um, so I'm going to rattle a few of these through here, we'll put, place them on the boat and we'll see how they sit and how they stack. Right guys, there we go, we've got the 10 creels through. Yes, they're looking a little bit of green, but you've got to remember they have been out the back for three years. Uh, they will be getting cleaned up and ready before we actually put them into the sea. Uh, and I'm also considering, in fact I'm not considering, I've already made my mind up, that we're going to be changing the size of the gear. Now, when I bought these, these were for the rock copper, which is a Cygnus 32, so I had plenty of deck room and all the rest of it. You always work the gear to suit the boat. Now to me these are a little bit too big for our vessel so I think we'll work them for the first season and then as the season progresses we will uh, downsize the size of gear, that's a definite I think. Right guys, there we go, 10 creels aboard and I would say yes they're nicely stacked and they're well dis distributed across the boat, however I still reckon with the weight 10 might be just that little bit too much especially for these size of creels. Now it's definitely made my mind up that I'm going to go to a smaller size creel, 
but uh, I'll need to work this season with them because the cost just in these alone, uh, it would blow your mind, it really would. And as per usual, uh, the cost's going up, so we need to be really careful about what we're doing because obviously we've never made a penny in the last three years. <laughs> now that we've got that done, I'm going to talk to you about the, how we're going to put the boat on the rollers and how we're going to get it out of the shed. So guys, a quick explanation on how we're going to roll the Lindsay B out of the shed. First of all, I want to talk about the sideways motion that we're going to do. Uh, first of all, I need to put the lifting straps over the boat uh, because we're going to be pulling her sideways and I want to keep the lifting straps as low as possible to the keel. Why is the reason for that? The centre of gravity all the way will be on the rollers and at the keel. If we have the lifting straps high up, then there's a chance that she'll be wanting to go towards the pool and then that might upset the keel at the bottom on the rollers. So if we keep everything nice and low and pull her, she should be fine. After we've put the straps on, we're going to jack her up just a little bit, take the stones out, then we're going to put the rollers underneath. Uh, the supports that you see at the side there, can you see them? We're going to keep a wee bit to the side because if there's any dramas with the jack or anything decides it's not want to do what it's supposed to do, that's always there for safety. Always safety first when lifting the boat. Uh, once the roller's in place, we'll lower it down onto the roller. At the back end, we'll put the bulge keels extensions that I put in with the rollers on the bottom. They'll get put on. Then I'll go to the back of the boat, lift up the, the starn, uh, take the last stone out and drop that on its final rollers and hopefully she'll be sitting nice and square ready for the pool. After that guys, what I'm going to do is chain myself to the bottom of this big post. Big support beam that holds up the building so if this goes wrong the whole building's coming down. <laughs> uh, we'll put the chain block down there, we'll run it towards the boat on centre, hopefully the straps will be either side of the bulge keel and slowly we'll start to bring her sideways. Once she's in line with the doors, what we'll have to do is jack her up again, turn the um, rollers round so they're pointing the right direction, and then we're going to use anchor points out the front, which is going to be the old tractor there. Uh, and I'm, go I'm actually going to use a vehicle over here as a secondary anchor point, and we're just going to basically run her out towards the cars there. God, it's bright out here. It's nice. Spring's coming. Hey! So, that's a quick explanation. I've done a hell of a lot of talking on the start of this vlog already. So, I think it's time to get on, don't you? Cue the music, Baz.
Should be fine at that, mate. Oh, 
banking on anything, will it? No. It's rising up a bit. Yeah. You've got to be that much, but six inches, Stuart, in the front. That's about four inches. Right about there. Right about there.
So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, finally, after three years hard graft, the Lindsay B finally made it out of the shed. I can't, uh, honestly, the day that we've had has been so exciting, uh, but I'm glad it's over. I want to thank Jeff Carter for doing the filming as I was busy uh, with the boat. And I'd like to thank Lindsay B, the real Lindsay B herself, for coming down and giving a hand and for our fantastic forklift driver, my brother-in-law, Stuart, for doing an absolutely wonderful job. And for little Andy, who turned up at the last minute to save the day, thank you so much. Right, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this vlog. It's been a cracker. Until your next vlog, all the very best, my friends. Hello everyone and how are you all doing? Welcome to your last vlog of One Man and His Boat. That's not what I say. Hello everyone and a very warm welcome indeed to the last vlog that the Lindsay B is going to be in the shed. Uh, yes, I've decided it, I've done all I can do in the... He's spitting everything. Hello everyone and a very warm welcome indeed. Thank you for joining us on another episode of One Man and His Boat. And this is... Oh, shut up Barry, honestly. This is what happens when you didn't sleep. <sighs> Hello everyone and a very warm welcome indeed. Hello everyone. Because I've got cameras everywhere, um, I just want to say thank you so much guys. Oh, I'm just spraffing nonsense mate. Oh, come on, you heard all this in your head earlier on. Hi guys, and thank you very much for joining us on this episode of One Man and His Boat. Your support means so much to us, it really does. Um, I just wanted to say uh, two thank yous. Thank you to the two Andes for bringing me some plywood. Oh no, I didn't want to do that. That's not how it works, Barry. Frickin' hell. <sighs> See these pieces to camera? You talk, you go it through in your head, on it, and then when it comes to actually spraffing, it just goes pop. It's like walking through the doors at Bowman and Asda. You got your shopping list in your head, you go through the double doors, you forget everything. <laughs> right, this time. Now, without his plywood, it would have been sticky wickets, that's for sure. <coughs> Damn. I had to put my hand across my mouth there. So guys, before we actually get on with these small jobs that uh, need to be done, uh, before we actually lift the boat and then put it on the rollers, and I've not even told you that bit yet, have I? Ah. Sue, so, be quiet please. Sue, Sue, you're the only one that talks. Will you be quiet? Thank you. So guys, a quick explanation about how we're going to... <laughs> uh, I hate this time of day. Honestly, she doesn't care how to shut up. She's just excited, bless her. Uh, drop the Lindsay B onto the rollers and where we're going to take it from there. Well, basically we'll have to raise... Now we've got doves, uh, uh, pigeons gone daft. I uh, can't win. Animals never work, never film on a farm, guys. Honestly. Eee. Right, guys, a quick explanation on what we're... Right guys, a quick explanation on the process that we're going to use to put, drop the boat onto the rollers. Now first of all, we're going to put the lifting straps around the boat and we're going to make sure that... <laughs> there's the pigeons again. <gasps> oh, right, I'll carry this on tomorrow, I think. Oh, but it's 
Well, you get that one nice, out. Nice shot of your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Either what likes, no dislikes, buddy. Sorry, Paul. 